Hey everyone, this is Alex from WarnOffKeys.com, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own kick and band commands using Discord.js version 13. In this video, I'll be using the WarnOffKeys commands command handler. If you have a different command handler you would like to use, that's fine. And if you're new to WarnOffKeys commands, an introduction video as well as the full documentation can be found in the description down below. Now, real quick, I want to mention that knowing JavaScript is required to follow this video and this entire series. If you don't know JavaScript, don't worry. You can scroll down to the description of this video, and at the top, you'll see JavaScript course. There was an hour-long crash course here on YouTube, which you can right-click and open this in a new tab, so you can watch that after you're done with this video. So some important notes is that I've already specified where my commands folder is, and I have an empty folder here, which we'll be adding some files to in a moment. I've also specified what test servers I have here, and because I'm looking to use slash commands, I have to specify a MongoDB connection here. If you don't have a Mongo server, you won't be able to use slash commands using one of keys commands. Now, if you've used one of keys commands before, maybe when following this series, make sure you have the latest version installed by doing npm install one of keys commands at latest, and this should install the latest version. There are frequently improvements and changes added to one of keys commands, so you want to make sure you stay up to date. So an important note here is that as of the latest version, you need to have a Mongo connection in order to use slash commands, without this, you will only be able to use regular legacy commands. And so far throughout this project, I've simply just specified my commands folder, as well as what test servers I'm going to be using. So inside my commands folder, I can go ahead and make a new file called kick.ts. And if you're using JavaScript, you'd want to use JS instead. Within here, we need to export an empty object. Within JavaScript, that would be module.exports equals an empty object like this. Within TypeScript, that would be export default object. And also within TypeScript, we can specify what type of object this is going to be by saying as I command here. And I command is an interface that one of keys commands has. This allows us to use autocomplete here so we can see all possible options for this object. Now, two things that we need for each command will be a category. And because we're kicking someone, I'm going to call this a moderation category. We also need a description, which I will just simply say kicks a user. And you can add in whatever text you want for these two properties, but they are required when using one of keys commands. Next, we should specify what type of permissions we need for this command. And one of keys commands provides two options for that. The first of which will be specifying built in Discord permissions, such as administrator. And this will make it so only people who are admins on the servers who are using your bot are able to actually kick people. Now, in a lot of cases, server owners want to have moderator roles have the ability to use some of these commands. So instead of this, we could specify require roles is true. Built into Warnoff Keys commands is a required role command, which will allow server owners to specify what commands need what roles to use. This required roles property being set to true will force this command to have a role attached to it so not everyone can use it. It'll also provide information to the server owner of how to do that. We'll take a look at this in action later on once we're done writing the code. Next, I'm looking to make this both a legacy command with a prefix such as kick, as well as a slash command such as forward slash kick. So to do this, we can specify slash as the string both, and then also specify test only as true. If you're not using slash commands or you do not have a MongoDB server connected to one of these commands, you can ignore these two lines here. Now, because we're kicking a user from a guild, we want to specify guild only is true. And behind the scenes, this will make sure that this cannot be ran within direct messages. And now we need to specify what type of arguments we're going to have on this command. So I could say minimum args is two. I could say expected args is a string. And here we're going to have the user first and then the reason. And if you're using slash commands, you can now specify what type of arguments these are going to be by passing in expected args types right here. This will be an array of strings that will match each individual type to the corresponding index of the expected argument. So the first element here will be the type for the user. The second element will be the type for the string right here. And if you do not provide this, it will assume every single one of these will be a string. So in this case, we want this user to be taggable within our slash command so we can pass in our user here, and then we can pass in our string here. Now again, if both of these were strings where we didn't have to tag anyone, we would not need this because one of these commands will assume strings for all the possible arguments. 
So I'm going to undo that. And here we can now finally add in our callback function, which will be ran every single time someone runs this command. This is passed in an object, which we can destructure some properties from, such as a message, the interaction, as well as an arguments array. Now the message is only provided if this is ran as a legacy command, for example, forward slash kick. And interaction is only provided if this is ran as a slash command. And arguments will be a string array, no matter if it's a legacy or slash command of each individual word passed in from the arguments here. So we could start off by getting the tagged user by either fetching it from the message or the interaction. And we can use a ternary operator to achieve this. So I could say const target equals message ternary operator. And here we can write the logic for if message does exist. So basically, if this is ran as a legacy command, I can say message dot mentions dot members dot first. And this will get us the first mentioned member. Now we can use a colon here to specify otherwise. And in this case, this will be what happens if a slash command is used. So I can say interaction dot options dot get member. And then we can pass in the exact string that we specified right here, which is user. Now, if I hover over get member, we see that this is going to return a guild member or an API interaction data resolved guild member or null. And the only thing we want is guild member. So we're going to specify this as guild member. And this code right here should only be used if you're using TypeScript. If you're using JavaScript, you won't need to do this. But I'm using TypeScript, so I have to add this in here. Now we need to make sure that target actually exists. So if not target, we can then return. I could say, please tag someone to kick. And then after this, we now know that target does exist. And if I go over to the documentation of guild member, I can scroll down to the kickable property. And this has a Boolean, whether this member is kickable by the client user. So we want to first make sure that the user is actually kickable before we attempt to kick them. So I could say, if not target dot kickable, I can then return cannot kick that user. Now afterwards, we now know that we have access to a member as well as we can kick them. So we want to create a string of the reason to do so. This was actually specified right here, but whether this is a legacy command or a slash command, the arguments array will include all passed in arguments, including the mentioned user right here. Now that's the first element of what this array would be. So we can remove the first element by just doing args.shift. Now afterwards, all remaining elements of the string array will be each individual word. So I could say const to reason equals args.join with a space. So this will take all remaining elements and combine them together and put a space in between them, basically creating a reason string. Then I can say target.kick as a method and pass in our reason. And finally, I'm going to return a template literal saying you kicked, and then I'm going to tag the mentioned user, which is less than, at symbol, greater than, and in between the at symbol and the greater than sign, I can insert in target.id. Now, one thing I want to quickly mention before we test this is that when using slash commands, you have the ability to set ephemeral to true. And this way, only people who ran the command are able to see the response. Now, because this is a moderation command, you might want that functionality. And it's annoying to have to manually check to see if interaction exists and then respond. So one of keys commands has a built in way to do this very easily. For example, right here, instead of returning a string, I can return an object with custom is true. Now, anything else inside this object is what will be passed into interaction.reply behind the scenes. So for example, we could set content as cannot kick that user and ephemeral is true. I could do the same concept at the bottom here. I'm going to cut out this code. I'm going to say custom is true. This will tell one of keys commands to pass in this object to the reply method. We can say content is this and then ephemeral is true. Now in this top case here, this is fine to do because the only way target is null or undefined is if we passed in a string instead of a mention on a legacy command. That's because specifying user here as a type will force the user running the slash command to actually mention someone. And so target should always exist when using a slash command. So with that said, we could still stick to simply just returning a string. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And I'm going to open up a new terminal by going to terminal, new terminal. Now you should be already navigated into your normal folder, 
but for me, I have to navigate into episode 11. And now I can run my bots with npm run dev. Now, if you get an error or a warning about not having a Mongo connection and trying to create a slash command, you can simply change slash to false or just remove this altogether. And now it says our bot is running. And now we can go into Discord. And now we can test this command with exclamation point kick. It's then going to say you must specify what roles can use this command with the required roles command. That's because we specified right here required roles is true. And because we have not configured any roles to be required for this command, such as a moderator role, it's going to not work, but instead going to tell the user who ran the command how to use it. Now, only administrators can run this command, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I can say required roles. I can specify the command name, in this case, kick, and then the role ID. So if I go over to my server settings and under roles, I can right click on moderator and copy the ID. I can then go back and paste this in here. It'll now say it added that role to the command kick. And so I can then run it here. And it says, I do not have the moderator role. So I can give myself that role. And now if I try it again, it's going to say incorrect usage, please use kick, user, and reason. So I'm first going to try kicking something that isn't a user. So I can say kick test. And normally we would mention a user here. I can then say test again. It'll then say, please tag someone to kick. So I could try kicking myself for test. It then says cannot kick that user. And now I'm going to try testing this account here. So I can say kick at testing account for the reason of testing. We now see that they left the server here and that you kicked testing account. So the kick command now works and the ban command is very similar. So I'm going to minimize my console and I'm essentially going to copy this entire thing here. And I'm going to make a new command as a new file called ban.ts. I can then paste this in here. And we have a couple things to change, such as the description. Instead of kicks, we can say bans. The user and the reason is fine. Scrolling down, we can say, please tag someone to ban instead of kick. Instead of target.kickable, we have bannable, which is the same concept, but only for banning users. Now the content here, we can say cannot ban that user. And scrolling down, instead of target.kick, we can specify target.ban. Now we're getting an error here because we're not meant to pass in just a string. Instead, we have an object. And if I use control space, we see a reason right here. We can pass that in. We also have days, which is between zero and seven. And this is how many days of messages to delete the user. This is not how long the ban should be. To do that, there'll have to be separate functionality built in. And by default, so this is just going to be a permanent ban. So here we have content. Instead of you kicked, we can say you banned. And everything should be working here. So I'm going to save this and we see my bot is automatically restarting. It now says created guild slash command ban. And if we go back into discord, I can now try the ban command here. It's going to say we have to specify what roles this way. Not anyone can just ban someone immediately. So I'm going to go and copy the role again. I can copy ID there. I can now say required roles ban and then the ID. I can now run the ban command again, and it gives me proper usage. So I could try banning myself or testing. It'll say cannot ban that user. And I also want to test if ephemeral true actually worked. So I could say forward slash ban. I can specify myself and the testing. It'll then say cannot ban that user. And this is only sent to me. So I can then dismiss this message. And that is because we passed in ephemeral true right here. So if you wanted to pass in embeds or buttons or other things like that, you can just add it to this message, just as if you're going to do interaction.reply or message.reply. So I've now re-invited the testing account. We can go ahead and try banning them. So let's try the slash command version, which should work the same exact way. So forward slash ban. I can then tag testing account. And the reason will be testing the ban command. And if I run this, it'll say you ban testing account and only we can see this. And we see that they are no longer there. If I go to my server settings and I go to bans, we now see testing account right here. The reason is testing the ban command. Thanks for watching the video. If you want access to video source code, as well as early access to future tutorials, consider clicking on the join button down below the video to support the channel.